Turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to go back to basics here. We're going to go back to the beginning. I believe the Lord is going to do something that is meaningful in your life. You're familiar with it. But I believe that God is going to take some things that you maybe thought you knew. And by the time he's done, you'll speak like Job and says, Lord, you know all things. Genesis 126, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. You are created for purpose. And we are talking now about living on purpose. One of the greatest um, men of God of our times impacted me, impacted my life on this subject of purpose. Those of you who have been part of this ministry for 20, 30 plus years, uh, you know the relationship that this church had with the late Dr. Miles Monroe. And he really unpacked some things in the kingdom of God on this subject. And I remember when I was uh, first licensed into the ministry, he laid hands on me. And he's imparted to me so many times, times in private conversation. I remember being all night up listening as a young preacher to the seasoned preachers, the men and women of God, and just being a fly on the wall and soaking it all in as they unpack mysteries in the kingdom. And he used to talk about greatest tragedy is to be alive and not know why. He used to talk about uh, without understanding purpose, where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable that we don't have that why. Life loses meaning. And so, especially in the day and age that we live, I want us to take some time, and Pastor Jackson and Aurora, he's sharing it and Although we're on the subject, I respect Pastor Jackson enough to know that I can't uh, preach it like him, and so I'm going to do it like I do it, and he's going to do it like he, do it, he does it, and I encourage you to, you know, check both of them, both of us out online, and that's a beautiful thing about technology. Uh, you get to receive it all, and so... I encourage you, he, he started on this series, and we're on this together. And when this is done, as we believe we release what God has given us on this subject, I am expecting your life and mine to change. I'm expecting that this church will not be the same as God's people begin to walk and live 
on purpose with a different authority and a different anointing, walking and stepping into a different anointing where we're not living in confusion, we're not living in insecurity, guessing and wondering, but there is a confidence, and it begins and ends in God. In the beginning, going back to the principal thing, is God. He used to say, if you want to know the purpose of the thing, never ask the thing. You ask the manufacturer. Sometimes we, find a, we try to find our identity in people who did not make us. And we allow people who did not make us to put limitations on us. We allow people who did not create us uh, to tell us where we can go and what we can do and how we should think. And we get bad advice about who we are from people who did not create us. I like the fact that there was, uh, and he came to our church years ago, Peter Daniels. Uh, He is from Australia. He is a billionaire. And he was born in poverty in Australia. Family was looked down upon. Failure from every aspect that you would look at his life. But one day, he went to a Billy Graham crusade, and he realized that the King of Kings died for him, that he might be a child of the King. And he concluded in his simple logic in mind that if I'm a child of the King, I'm not going to live like I've been living And he's been all over the world speaking to world leaders, uh, speaking to business leaders, uh, changing lives, because he realized one day who he was. I've used this story before, share it again. Someone, uh, a son, a son, he, he woke up told his mother, don't want to go to school today. Not going to school today. Mom said, you have to go to school. He said, no, no, no. The children, they talk about me, make fun of me. I don't want to go to school. You have to go to school. No, even the teachers, they, they all hate me. They all gossip about me. They, they talk about me. None of them like me. I'm not going to school today. The mother said, you have to go to school. He says, why? Because you're the principal. Uh, everything changes when you realize who you are. So God says, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. When you look at Genesis, you see it repeated all over, and God said, and God said, and God said, God said, let there be light. God said, let there be a firmament. God said, uh, let there be stars in the sky, the sun to give light by day, the moon to give light by night. God said it, and it was so. By faith, Hebrews 11.3 tells us that we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. So nothing happened until God said it. And the same way in your life, in my life, nothing happens until we receive the God said. The God said. Normally in creation, he's speaking to the earth. He's speaking to uh, the ground in the When he made the fish, he spoke to the water and commanded the water to bring forth. But when it came to you, God didn't speak to the earth. God didn't speak to the water. God spoke to himself. This is the first time God says, let us. God speaks to himself. And so you and I came out of him. We're different than anything else in creation because God breathed into man. Man became a living being, a living soul. The life also of Jesus is made manifest. So you have an identity. No one can regard you after the flesh. No one 
uh, can determine your value because your value has been set. And God says your value is the life of his only son that he loves. No one can say you're stupid. Nobody can say you're worthless. Nobody can say, they don't have the authority. You're sometimes struggling with depression because you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see. Uh, you, you, someone has distorted the mirror, even the natural mirror can distort the image of who you are because of who you are. Uh, you can now realize what you're capable of and why you are here. You can follow along in the YouVersion uh, Bible app. The notes are, are there. When we talk about purpose, we're talking about the original intent. Purpose speaks of, if you take a note, it is the original intent. And God's original intent for your life does not change. You might feel that you messed up, but God's intent does not change. He says, I know the plans I have for you. That hasn't changed. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance, irrevocable. It speaks of the reason something exists. You are not without reason. Uh, your life is not without meaning or significance. There is reason. There's a reason why you were born into the family that you were born into. There were, there's a reason why you were born on the other side of the tracks. There is a reason why you were born in the nation that you were born in. The Bible says in Acts 17 that God even set the boundaries of your habitation for a purpose that you might and I might seek the Lord. Don't look down uh, because you might have been born in unfavorable circumstances. I remember years ago we were having a men's conference and there was a brilliant speaker uh, with a very successful life in ministry and I was just admiring him. And I didn't realize as he was telling this as he was telling the story about a young woman, 14 years old, who was raped. And when she was impregnated by this rape, she was shunned from everyone, abandoned. And she had the option to abort this baby that was causing her so much disgrace and shame. But against what she thought was her better judgment, she kept this baby. And this baby would one day find the Lord. He started off, uh, he was rebellious. Uh, he was uh, thinking on his own and dogmatic in his own thinking and ways. And he eventually, uh, you know, was going down the path of being a black Muslim and he found Christ in the midst of that. And God has raised him up and now his life has touched millions all over the world. Doesn't matter where you came from. Doesn't matter the circumstance. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter who your parents were because if you were born in the White House, the Word of God still says uh, that we have to forget the empty traditions or manner of life from our fathers. Doesn't matter how good your parents were, the Bible still says that in Adam all die. So Paul, with all of his uh, accomplishments and creditation, he could not look to his lineage as being from the tribe of Benjamin, as being uh, very 
uh, diverse in his thinking and recognized and respected uh, in his educational accomplishments, being a Pharisee among the Pharisees. No. He says, all that means nothing. It doesn't matter. Don't look down on yourself because of where you come from. Purpose speaks of the destination that precipitates the journey. Time, high time that you and I learn what it means to live on purpose. We are created for purpose. Jesus says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight. He says, this is why I've come. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and I've come to set you free. I've come to open your eyes. You and I, you have been given a purpose, and you've been given a purpose by God. You were created for God's purpose. And if you don't discover that, you will abuse your life. If you don't understand the purpose for your manhood, you will abuse your manhood. You will abuse your womanhood. You would abuse your wife or your husband, whatever we don't know the purpose for a thing. We'll abuse it. You weren't created for that. So it's so important, critical that we understand and discover purpose is revealed in the creator. Revelations 4.11 says, For you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Some translations say, and for your pleasure they were created. Guess what? You are created for God's pleasure. When God made you in his image and his likeness, he looked down on you and he desires to take pleasure in you as he sees his reflection back at him through your life. God actually likes you. He takes pleasure in you. Uh, Yeah, I know people might have uh, disrespected you and say, I I don't like you. And maybe people at the job have, have been rude or mean, but... God says, I take pleasure in you. I need you to see yourself differently. I need you to walk through life differently because the eternal God of the universe takes pleasure in you. Even though you want to put yourself down and listen to the accusations of the enemy, God does not see you the way the devil has accused you or the way you see yourself. He says, I take pleasure in you. Glory to his name. Uh, And God has empowered you. He's empowered us for purpose. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You are created for good works, these good works that you were created to do in the natural, if we were to tell you to do them, you might say, I can't. But everything that God has purposed you for, he's equipped you to do. He strengthened you in advance for the journey that right now seems impossible. He's already provided everything that you need to be successful in the assignment that he's called you to perform. Uh, You already got the stuff. You already have the anointing to do the impossible. He doesn't tell you to walk on water if you're going to sink by stepping out the boat in obedience. If he tells you to walk, uh, he empowers you to do what you can't do on your own. You see, the problem is we are limiting ourselves for what we think we can do. Uh, We are limiting ourselves based on what our education says we can accomplish. Uh, God equips you and empowers you to do what is impossible with man. You can get discouraged if you start to look at your own resume 
and then look at the purpose of God and say, there's a serious gap here, it's not enough. Uh, but I want to encourage you, uh, you got what it takes. You got the stuff. You got the secret sauce. You were born for this. Uh, you, you, you can do this. Uh, whenever I feel overwhelmed uh, in trying to be the husband that my wife deserves, if I ever feel that I'm not performing at the level that I ought to perform. I'm reminded that I am anointed. God has given me the stuff to love this woman. When it comes to parenting, and I might feel inadequate, that I'm not doing a good job, I'm not giving my children everything that they need, I have to remind myself, no, 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 I'm, a, I'm anointed, I'm graced to parent them. I have uh, uh, the wisdom that is needed to father my children. I have the, the grace that is needed to love them in a way uh, that is meaningful, uh, that they can receive it. I'm anointed for them. You are anointed. Uh, you are great. Stop looking at yourself. No, 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 no. I uh, know your, your, your identity comes from uh, where you originated. Uh, God says, remember where you come from. Remember in Isaiah 51, the rock from which you've been hewn. You, you come from stock. You come from serious stock. I, I like to watch uh, those uh, old British shows and uh, watch the, the British drama uh, where you get to go see the history and you see uh, the royal bloodlines and they're, they're, they're fighting in, in that time and era and still some of them today, uh, their value was in their lineage. And so if you were born in nobility, uh, you are different than the commoners uh, because you were born in nobility. You see, the problem with us is that we were born in sin, shaping in iniquity, in sin that our mother considered. The way we were born, doesn't matter what family you came from, you and I, we were messed up in our birth. And so Jesus tells Nicodemus, uh, your problem is you were just born wrong. You were just born in the wrong family. You were born on the wrong side of the tracks. Uh, the reason why you are the way you are, it, it has everything to do with how you were born. Uh, so for you to get what I'm talking about, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I uh, see so you were born an alcoholic. You were born with a propensity to anger. You were born with a generational curse attached to your life. You were born uh, to be divorced. You were born uh, to be a failure. You were born uh, to, to be addicted to pornography or addicted to drugs or, or, or to be controlled uh, by your emotions. That's how you were born. But see, that's not who you are. That person has died. Uh, that person you used to be no longer exists. Uh, that person uh, that was a failure in life, that person's uh, buried, dead, and gone. Now a new you is on the scene. Now you are a new creature in Christ, and you have been given uh, a, a purpose. You were living without purpose before. You were living for yourself, but now you are living for God's pleasure. And everywhere you go, you make God look good. Everywhere you go, you testify of the goodness of God. Your, your life is a living epistle, read of all men. Everywhere you go, you testify, oh, look what the Lord has done. Uh, your life is a show and tell. Your life uh, is a walking Bible. Uh, you carry the word of God. You carry the anointing. You even change. There's so much on you. You change atmosphere. Uh, you can go into a place of strife and discouragement and despair. And as soon as you step in there, as soon as you step into the uh, workforce, as soon as you step into the job, the atmosphere change where people have been living. Everyone starts to calm uh, because uh, you have stepped into the room and you're carrying anointing. How beautiful are the 
the feet of them that preached the gospel of peace. They overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Oh, come on now, y'all better, y'all better say something. You better say something. God has just been too good. You, you, you can't be quiet. Other people, maybe they don't have nothing to say, uh, but you got reason to brag. And your boast is in the Lord. I need someone with a testimony of the goodness of God that knows him whom they have believed just to say something right now. Second Timothy 3.17, Paul is speaking to his son in the faith. He says that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly, and equipped for every good work. Now, if you go back to verse 16, it tells you, uh, if you want to get the context of your being equipped, it says that all Scripture is God breathed. The same way uh, God says, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and God breathed his spirit into you, and you became alive. The word of God, uh, this Bible is alive. You see it? It's, it's breathing. It's alive. It's not just uh, words on a page. It's not a newspaper, uh, but this word, when you take it in, changes everything, changes everything about you, changes everything about your life, changes and transforms your situation, changes your body uh, from being sick to being healed, changes your finances from being broke to being blessed, changes your relationship from being strife uh, ridden and, 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 and anxious uh, for, for your relationship to be blessed of God. Oh, you, this word changes everything. I encourage you to eat this word. I encourage you to get real hungry for the word. I encourage you to meditate on this word day and, and night for it is life to those that find them and health to all of their flesh. I don't play with this book. Don't play with this word. I don't play with what God says. Don't play with it. No, no, no. It's life changing. Allow the word of God to enter you. Allow what God, I'm not, I'm not talking about what they told you. I'm not talking about the lies of the enemy. I'm not talking about the prognostication of man. I'm talking about the God said that gets you up in the morning. You have a God said over your life. You walk differently. Hallelujah to his great name. Ha, ah, ah, ha, scriptures God breathe. Why? Ah, that the man of God may be equipped for every good work. God wants you fully loaded because you got something to do. Uh, now, 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 the enemy wants to, to, to make you doubt what God has put on the inside of you. He'd make you question whether you can actually fulfill purpose, where you can see the purpose of God revealed in your life. He'll, if you allow him to do the talking, if you allow Goliath to do all the talking in your life, you will cower in fear. That's why you always got to talk back. You got to talk back to your own emotions, to your own feelings. You got to talk back to your own doubts. You got to talk back to the past that wants to be your future. You got to talk back. The problem is you're too quiet. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. And you've accepted the lie that you were born with. You've accepted the lie of your background, of your upbringing. You've accepted the lie of your context. No, no, no. The devil is a lie. I like how we say it. We don't say the devil is a lie. He is a lie. The devil is a lie and the word of God is true. Now, whose report are you going to believe? You see, when you feel that you are inadequate, when you feel that you're not good enough, you can never live on purpose because you've lost before the game began. You were defeated before you, b b before you got up. That's why the Word of God is a mirror to tell you who you are. Uh, so, sometimes uh, my family 
they, they, they'll tell me, um, my children, say, hey, Dad, you know, you, you know, you want to check that? And I, I get in front of the mirror, and I'm like, I'm glad nobody saw me <laughs> except my children. Uh, when you get in the mirror, you start to say, oh, you look, at, look, look, look in the mirror. I say, oh, no, that, that attitude doesn't belong there. Get the, that, that bitterness, no, 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 that's not me. Uh, that, 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 that ignorant, the way I was yelling, no, no, that's not me. Uh, that disrespectful tone, that, no, that's not me. I'm royalty. Uh, that spirit of lust, no, no, that, that's not me. That, no, that's not who I am. No, no, no. That poverty, thinking and living, that's not who I am. Uh, the, the mirror the God said is telling you who you are. I like when my wife and I, we get in front of the mirror and we can, we, we, we can you know, we can be in front of the mirror uh, and we make sure everything is together because when we step out, we want to start our stuff appropriately. But we also get in front of the mirror of the word of God in our marriage. And the mirror is going to tell you what belongs and what doesn't belong. The mirror in your life is gonna reveal the booger in your nose. The mirror of the word of God is gonna reveal the sin uh, that needs to be under the blood. The mirror will, will cause you to confess your sins and every time you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness so you step away from the mirror clean. You step away from the mirror together. Oh yeah. Spiritual vanity is good. It's good to always spend time in front of the spiritual mirror. Uh, it, it, it'll reveal who you are. And it will reveal what has to go. Uh, yeah. The mirror will reveal the stuff that God has put in you. You are capable of performing at a much higher rate than you've performed. We are operating beneath our capacity. The stuff and the anointing and the grace that God has put on the inside of us it has given us capability that we have not realized yet. And that's why it's called potential. And you don't want to die in potential. You don't want to just live in potential. You want to live on purpose when potential is realized. I mean, I flunked out of school having potential. You can fail with potential. You can die with potential. You don't want to live on potential. You want to put potential to work and live on purpose. But in order to live on purpose, uh, we're going to have to get educated in the Word of God and we're going to have to receive and live in the Word because our thinking is off when we don't realize who we are. You see, when Sarah didn't realize who she was and the purpose of God came to her, she laughed. What? I'm going to have a baby? She laughed at the idea of her having pleasure. She laughed at the idea of her having pleasure. The fact that if you are obedient to the Lord, that you will uh, spend your Days in prosperity, your years in pleasure. What God wants to do to show off his glory in your life, it might seem so ridiculous to your natural mind, you'll laugh. What, me? Yes, you. Moses didn't realize.
realized he was equipped, so he thought he couldn't speak. Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, thought he was too old. Jeremiah, the prophet, thought he was too young. You got more in you than you realize, but the word of God will help you draw it out. Isn't it interesting how God chooses the foolish things of this world? The disciples, the last people you would think to be equipped to do what they did. They were too ignorant. Too ignorant to fulfill the purposes of God. So all of us, we can look at our lives and say we're too this or too that to do it. But isn't it high time we get the lesson because God keeps on doing stuff that doesn't make sense to our rational mind and it confounds the wise. God will take the person who we say can't do it and he'll use that very person. Isn't it interesting to me? It's so interesting. I'm fascinated. Some of the most influential pastors are not the ones who are seminary trained. Right now uh, in, in, in Tulsa, uh, there's this young man, Michael Todd. Now, I was there in the church that he came from. I probably in college might have walked by and saw this little, this little kid. I might have walked by him because we were both there in the same church. Well, I was at ORU. That's the church I was at, same church. And when I look at him in the natural, the way God is using the influence that God has given them, what he's responsible for in the kingdom, makes no sense. Just came out of nowhere. God can use the foolish. Our, the Pharisees said, wait a second, hold up. We thought we got rid of Jesus. Aren't these unlearned men? You don't qualify for what God has called you to. You don't qualify. No, 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 your past is too messed up. You have too many mistakes. There are too many things you've done wrong. You have as far as the natural is, con is concerned, you have disqualified. You are a disgrace. You are an embarrassment. God says, you, I want you, that one. What, Lord, you're going to use that one? Lord, wait, wait a second. Hold on. You don't, you don't, let, me give you the, let me give you the T on this one. God says, I got my own T. Thank you. I want you to do through me what is exceedingly abundantly above anything you can ask, think, or imagine because I put something on the inside of you. Glory to his name. Uh, there, there is something on the inside of you. I have a river of life. I've been equipped. I've been empowered. Uh, how are we going to win the world? How are we going to see this change? There's so many problems, Lord, in this world. Uh, there's so much injustice. Lord, are you going to now restore the, 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 the kingdom of Israel from the oppression and the racism and the injustice of the Roman Empire, the world's superpower? Are you now going to uh, come to the scene now so that the world can see that you are the Messiah? And Jesus says, uh, I don't worry about that. You're going to do it. Uh, it's not given for you to know the times and the seasons which your father has put in his own hand, but you shall receive power. 
You shall receive supernatural ability that you did not have before. Uh, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You shall receive an anointing that enables you to do the impossible. You shall receive an anointing and power to change the world. When you step into the world with this power, uh, you're going to turn people from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. Aren't these unlearned men? These guys don't deserve to be here. I know, Peter, you should have departed for him because he's a sinful man. Uh, he has a bad past. He is, he, he's no good. Uh, Peter even said, Peter even said himself when God called him, Lord, I'm no good. I don't deserve to be one of your disciples, but God has chosen the foolish things to confound the wise. Your life, your testimony, the glory of God, the purposes of God, when realized in your life, are to confound the wise. Stand to your feet. I'm not done. Don't know why God chose someone as foolish, messed up as me, or as foolish as you. People see the surface, but God sees our inward parts. And when we look at the natural mirror, we know we're not good enough for the high calling. We're not good enough for the high. We, we don't fit that standard. But God, based on his own sovereignty and in his own love, he says, I want you. I want you for myself. I want to take pleasure in you. Without faith, without believing, it is impossible to please him. You're created for his pleasure. You read that in Revelation Chapter 4, that's what you are created for. But it starts with your believing. When are you going to believe what God says? We have to change and turn away from our own thinking. We turn away from our own ambitions, the life we want for ourselves. And we go back to the manufacturer. We go back broken, but the best person to fix you, the best, the best one to touch you and tweak this, change that, is the one that made you. He made you for himself. And there's been a recall. Not anything wrong that the manufacturer did. The manufacturer made you perfectly. But we failed to read the manual and we abused our lives and turned and did our own thing. God is calling you back to who you are. God's with repentance starts with being deeply sorry that you've offended God, the righteous and holy one. Starts with recognizing that you are a sinner and you need God's grace to save you. Left to yourself, left to your own devices, you are walking straight toward God's judgment and God's wrath. Don't let people fool you that hell is not real. Hell is real, very real. But God has made every provision for you because he loves you. That none should perish but have everlasting life. If you want Christ in your life, 
If you know in your heart, the Holy Spirit is the one that convicts you. The Holy Spirit is the one that makes you uncomfortable. The enemy just wants you to walk away and ignore and forget about it so he can do all the talking in your life. But there are moments when the Holy Spirit speaks and those moments you have to respond right away. If you need to commit your life to Christ, if you need to get saved, if you need to repent, or if you're a backslider and you need to recommit your life to Christ, because you don't want to go where backsliding will take you. The slide is taking you somewhere. And so in the fear of God, in the reverence of God, you and I, we repent. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking with other tongues, receiving your prayer language. Or if you need to be firmly planted in the local church, those that are planted shall flourish. You'll never You'll never experience the fullness of the purposes of God if we don't do it the way God says. And God says you have to be planted. There is a rebellious spirit that wants to come on the generation that tells them uh, that they don't need to be planted. That's a lie. You can't go above the Word of God. God set the church up. God says you and I, we need to be planted. Any of those four things to get saved, you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you want to uh, be, be, be baptized, or you want to join the church when we dismiss, or even on the chat, uh, you can write to us and we can get you started on this new journey. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you and bless you for the time we've had together. And as we leave this place and not your presence, may no evil befall us, no plague, accident, mishap of any kind come near us. May all of us reach our destination safely, come back in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with the testimony of leading someone to Jesus and bringing them to church with us. That the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace in Jesus' name. Those of you who need prayer, we ask you to please come to the altar. If you need healing in your body, whatever it is, please come to the altar to minister.